Energy Student Packet, which I'll walk you through. And then the other thing that we are really excited about this week or this year is we created something called the SIFMA Weekly. So every week during your stock market game participation, we have a different offering every day of the week. So Mondays, we have something called our SMG Week Ahead newsletter that I'll talk about. Wednesday, we focus on a particular video. And then Fridays, we have something called SMG on the street. It's a live session where you have the opportunity, you and your students have the opportunity to quote unquote, sit down with an industry professional and talk about a stock market game topic of that week. So I'll delve more into that as well. Um, during COVID, um, we had a lot of interest from parents. So parents were learning more about the stock market game and they wanted to get more involved. So we created a stock market game parent packet. And it's something that as you participate with your students, you might wanna share that with your parents. That if you're encouraging your students to do a lot more independent access of their portfolio, you can send them home with the parent packet that will help the students uh, the, the parents will be able to assist the students as they participate in the program. So I'm going to review that. Um, and then the stock market game is also available via our app. And it is in the midst of, we're in the midst of debuting a brand new version of our app. It'll probably debut in the next week or two. So again, the students can conduct investor research. They can do everything that they would do on a desktop version via their smartphone. A couple of other things, we have some pacing calendars I'll talk about, some webinars, um, Facebook, private Facebook page for stock market game teachers, and then obviously I'll open it up for some questions at the end. So um, after you register for a stock market game session, immediately after you register for a, for a stock market game session, you'll be provided immediate access to what we call the Teacher Support Center. And the way that you access this, again, is you come to our stockmarketgame.org homepage and you log in. Now, I manage the program in a variety of states, one of which is Kentucky. So I'm going to utilize my um, a Kentucky ID and password. But obviously, your ID and password would be um, from Wisconsin. So your, your username would start off with um, the Wisconsin abbreviation. So the first thing that I wanna um, make sure that you are aware of in the Teacher Support Center is this section right here. So if you have never participated in the Stock Market Game Program, this is your one-stop shop. And if you never visit any of these other aspects of the Teacher Support Center, that's fine. Oftentimes with new teachers, all this other stuff um, overwhelms you. So what we say is stick with the start here section. And what this does is this provides really the basics. So how do you set up your teams? How do you set up the, the portfolios? How does the password distribution, what does that look like? We also give you tools for teachers. So things that you can access to walk yourself through and help plan for your stock market game students. And I'll just touch upon these really quick. So as I mentioned before, in Wisconsin, you have the ability to participate in a 10-week session, either fall or spring. And what we've done is um, we've mapped it out for you. Yes. Hi. Um, are we supposed to see your screen share? And okay, thank you so can much. Can you see it now? Yes. <laughs> I apologize. I didn't hit share. Okay, so I'm glad that I was able to. Thank you for telling me that. So I'm going to go back and, and just show you where I am. So I apologize for that. So I'm going to do a quick. So when you register for the program, um, after you register for the program, you're gonna receive your ID and password to provide immediate access to the Teacher Support Center. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, which I did before. Okay. 
bear with me as I shut my window. Okay, so I had mentioned to you before about the start here section. And this is the section that you really wanna zero in on and focus on to learn about the nuts and bolts about the program. So when I click on the start here section, it reviews the team IDs and passwords. How do you distribute the team IDs and passwords to your students? Um, you can really delve into roles for your students. Some teachers like to make the, have them work cooperatively and really spell out, okay, this is your role. You're the director, you're the reporter, you're entering all the trades. This is completely voluntary. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but some teachers find this helpful to kind of hold the students accountable. And then you can switch the roles as you go through your stock market game session. Um, so tools for teachers. So this is where you wanna to come to kind of map out, help plan your stock market game session. So as I mentioned to you before, um, in Wisconsin, you have the 10 week option, and then you also have the year long option. To assist in kind of helping you map it out week by week, we've created these pacing calendars. You can take them or leave them. Some teachers find them really, really helpful to have it scripted and say, okay, on week one, I wanna cover this. Um, week two, all the way through the conclusion. So this can be very, very helpful for you, or you may decide, you know what? I've got my curriculum or I kind of want to see where my kids fall and you don't utilize that, but it's an option. So that's the 10 week. And then the 32 week calendar, again, maps you through the whole year, starting in September and walks you through each week. Okay. Now I mentioned to you before about the mini lesson videos. And this is brand new. This is, we just created these and launched them probably, I would say, maybe two months ago. They're, they're brand new. And again, this is what teachers were requesting us from us. They said, all of the core concepts that you expect us to teach that the students need to know when they participate in the stock market game, it would be great if you could just create a three to five minute video that reviews those topics. So what you'll see here is all of the basics. So starting with chapter one, why is investing important? How is the stock market game relevant to me? So again, when you're launching the stock market game with your students, this is the perfect thing to review with them. As you go week by week, and again, these videos are not to be played like one right after each other day by day, it's more week by week. So then as you get more involved in the, or as you kind of lay the groundwork for the program, students have to know what a company is because everything based, or everything in the stock market game is based on real world. So if they're interested in investing in Starbucks or if they're interested in investing in Nike, they need to know what are the ticker symbols. They need to know how to do investor research. So these cover the core. What's a company? What is a stock? What's a ticker symbol? How do you read a stock quote? And the, a lot of the questions that we receive about the videos is what grade level are they geared to? They're geared towards a middle school kind of one thing to keep in mind is stock market game. We deliver the stock market game to fourth graders all the way up to AP economics classes. And we wanted to have the sweet spot. So it's more of the middle school. It, it's very appropriate to show these videos to your high school students. They're not going to think that they're babyish. And then their students who are elementary, they're not going to feel as though they're too hard to understand. So they're really kind of layman's terms anyone who's looking at these will get a good understanding and, and, and it's a good launching off point. So again, they cover the basics. How do you do stock research? How do you go about trading in your stock market game portfolio? What are the major rules that your students should know? Um, and then you'll see as the students progress in their stock market game portfolio, what causes stock prices to change? So that's chapter nine. That's when your students are kind of really 
in their portfolio. They've made trades. They've seen how their trades have risen or fallen in value. And then they're naturally going to have the question, buy, sell, or hold. If their Nike stock takes a nosedive, they're in their group or if they're working independently, they're going to think to themselves, what do we do now? Do we buy more shares? Do we sell it? Or do we kind of ride it out since this is just a short-term simulation? So these are, these are what these um, videos aim to address. Now, these videos, whoops, these 10 core lessons, the 10 chapters, I said before, is that they're the perfect launching off for our full-fledged lesson plans. So you'll see all of these videos correlate exactly to our core lessons. And I'm in elementary right now, but they're the same for middle school and the, the same for high school. Now, if I'm a high school economics teacher, this may seem very, very simplistic, but for an elementary school teacher who's teaching this to fourth graders, this is totally appropriate. So these are the core. These are the things that they really need to know when they're participating in the stock market game. Obviously, if you're teaching economics or you're teaching a high school social studies class, you can delve much further. And that's where the bulk of the teacher support center curriculum materials, we've got much more. But I don't, for the sake of this, I don't want to overwhelm you if you're new to the stock market game, but you focus on these and you can have a very successful um, delivery of the stock market game. But I'll quickly just pull this up, pull a lesson up to kind of give you an overview of what they look like, because they're all basically the same. Um, grade level is going to be listed there. Um, they're all geared towards a 50 minute class period, um, gives you the background, gives you kind of the objectives, and then walks you through uh, um, the procedure. Okay. So they, they look pretty much the same, whether they're elementary, middle school, or high school. Okay. Um, I had also referenced um, the student packet. So I want to pull that up for you. And the student packet is available right here in the tools for students. You can pull this up. And I had mentioned to you before, this really rose out of teachers saying to us, we're not meeting with our students on a daily basis due to COVID. However, we don't want them to, for our students who are really excited about the stock market game and who have the ability to self-pace, can you come up with something that covers kind of everything that they would be interested in? Now, if you, if you briefly look at this, there's many things that are included in here that were not covered in the videos. So we cover mutual funds, we cover bonds. If you, as a teacher, don't cover those during your stock market game um, session with your students, that's completely fine. They can invest in stocks the entire time, but this gives students who are ready for those concepts the opportunity to delve into them if they want. So again, it's really user-friendly for the students. They've access to this in their portfolio. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the Sysma Foundation Weekly in a moment. Gives them all the financial terms that they want or that they're going to encounter when they play. And then just basic information. So what is a stock? What is, how do you read a stock quote? And you know your students. There's going to be some students who you, they pull this up in their portfolio or you provide this to them. And they were like, no way I'm going to read this. No way. I need my teacher to walk me through this. But then you have some students who are like, oh, this is awesome. I can look at this. I don't need to wait for my, my teacher to walk through this. Um, I get it. And I can, and I can um, do this even when I'm not in class. So it covers, again, all the major, major components throwing in additional concepts like mutual funds and bonds, okay? We provide kind of nice little cheat sheets like how do you enter a stock trade? It'll walk them through. 
how do you enter a stock trade on the app? Where to uh, download the app? How do you diversify your portfolio? And as we talk about diversification, I just wanted to touch upon, I know um, Julie for Wisconsin has a couple of rules that I just wanted to point out. So um, there, it doesn't look like she has a diversification rule. So you don't have to enter bonds or mutual funds, but you do need to have your students enter at least three trades by the end of the game session. So by the last day of your game session, students have to go into their portfolio and make three different trades. They start off with that virtual $100,000 um, and they need to invest at least 75,000 of it. Um, you have real time pricing. So if the students are in their portfolio and they're making trades when the stock market is open from 9.30 to four Eastern time, they get the immediate price if a trade is entered during that time. If a trade is entered after the markets close. So if they are entering trades over the weekend, which they can, they can enter trades 24 seven, they receive the following day's opening price. So again, if they're entering over the weekend, they receive Monday's opening price. And then also one final rule to be aware of is there is a 25% maximum equity rule. And what that is, is the students can't pour all of their money into Amazon stock or Netflix stock. They can only spend 25% of their buying power on one stock. And that's to encourage diversification. So if they attempt to um, pour all of their money into um, Starbucks, it won't let them. It'll limit them to 25% of their portfolio, of their buying power. Okay, so that's the um, student packet. And then what I wanted to pull up for you right now is I wanted to log into a trading portfolio and just show you where the students can access those mini lesson videos. Because I think that's really helpful is that if you're gonna have the students um, access or if you're gonna assign some aspects of the stock market game as homework, and we always encourage you to do that, um, they can, again, they don't need to have you in front of the class or on the Zoom instructing is that they can watch the videos themselves. So I'm gonna pretend right now that I'm a student. I'm gonna log into my trading portfolio. And again, my portfolio is Kentucky. So it's gonna look a slightly different for you in Wisconsin. Um, but what you'll notice here is that this is an actively traded portfolio. When they pull up their portfolio for the very first time, it's not going to say $60,000 for cash. It's going to be that virtual $100,000. You may have accrued or your teams may have accrued. And I apologize, the lawn people are mowing my lawn right now. Talk about timing. So um, it may have accrued some interest. So don't be surprised if your portfolio or your student's portfolio have an extra $70, 80 bucks in it. Okay, so that's interest. Um, and then everything else will be zero. So once they start investing, that's where they'll start seeing value in their portfolio. You'll notice here, I have 34,000 in stocks. I am invested in mutual funds and I have purchased treasury bonds as well as corporate bonds. But in terms of your students accessing those core mini lesson units or videos, they simply come up to resources and they select core mini lesson videos. The YouTube um, playlist pops up and it's exactly what I had showed you previously. Is they click on any of them and then they are taken to that, that video. Okay. Um, one other thing that I always love to point out to teachers because a lot of teachers don't utilize it. And I always, for my states, I strongly emphasize this because it is how students stay abreast of market news is please have your students take advantage of this news feed because this is cutting, not cutting edge, but it is up to date. This is an MSNBC or Reuters feed 
um, directly in the student's portfolio. So it is updated multiple times a day. It keeps the students knowledgeable about what's going on in the investing world. It gives them ideas of investing choices that they may not have thought of. And for teachers who have played the stock market game before, who may be on the call, you can identify you've got some students who are in, in a rut of like, all right, I want to buy Nike, I want to buy Facebook, I want to buy Snap, all of the things that are kind of the traditional popular stocks, they have some trouble thinking outside of the box. And that's where this news feed is particularly helpful. If you just peruse, if the students just peruse the headlines, so they're going to be introduced to Virgin Galactic, Intel, Snap. If they scroll down, they're getting, again, more information about, hey, Mattel, I know they make toys. Maybe let's click this article or Gilead Science. So it's what is, what is the buzz in the, the stock market right now? And it's really, really helpful for them to pay attention to this stuff. And really, it's also a great talking point for you as the teacher, talking about real world events and the influence of on the stock market. So um, obviously the election, I wanna kind of steer clear of the election, but how does an election historically impact the markets? So you don't have to be partisan one way or the other. Um, you can look at it both ways. So we have an, uh, an election lesson that we're gonna be um, releasing next week um, where we talk about election cycles. And historically, what does an election cycle, um, what's the impact on the stock market? So that's coming out. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is something called the stock market game week ahead. Now, this has been in, I've been writing these probably for the last 10 years. Um, but what's exciting about this is it gave rise to something called the SIFMA Weekly. So let me back up. And when you participate in the stock market game, every Monday, you're going to get this newsletter. And I'm out of the national office, so everybody across the country receives my newsletter. And what they do or what the stock market game week ahead does the aim is to take a stock market concept or take what's happening in the real world, tie it to a stock market game concept, and give you as the teacher some helpful hints about delivering that concept to the students. What we also wanted to do is go back to the 10 core mini lesson videos and highlight one each week. So this is the most recent um, Stock Market Game Week Ahead that I wrote. We're focusing on quarterly earnings, but what we're focusing or what we want you to focus on this week is the video, the stock research and trading video. So every week, this is kind of our, our schedule. So Monday, you'll get a Stock Market Game Week Ahead newsletter in your inbox. Again, we talked about quarterly earnings. Um, how does that impact um, stocks, gives you some guiding questions to walk your students through. Tuesday, and again, this SMG Week Ahead newsletter is geared to you as the teacher to give you kind of some background um, when you're delivering the content to your students. Now, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, one of my colleagues delivers this content via an Instagram Live, which is geared towards students. So if you, if you read this article to your students, they may be like, this is really dry. How does this, like, can you explain it to me a little bit better? Instagram Live, my colleague Sarah Bryant, poses this and talks to the students um, in a much, much more engaging way than I can. So that's live every Tuesday, Instagram. They're also recorded, so if your students aren't able to access it live at 10 a.m., they can go to our Instagram page 
and view all of the past editions of that Instagram Live. We also on Tuesday post tips, stock market game tips to our Twitter and Instagram accounts. And then on Wednesday, what do we encourage you to do? We encourage you to show your students the, the, the video of the week. This week it was the stock research trading video. And then Thursday, um, we help you as the teacher prepare to have your students write our or respond to our invest right writing prompt. And I had mentioned to you before, invest right is our national as well as statewide essay competition. So this opportunity, opportunity for you every Thursday is to jump in and talk to the, the invest right staff that gives you key tips on how to have your students write successful essays. Now the invest right competition is not mandatory. Um, they do not work in teams for the invest right competition. They work individually, um, but it is a perfect culminating activity. It's a perfect way to tie real world to the stock market game. And one other interesting aspect about the invest right competition is the students who do the best in the invest right competition are the ones that tend to do the worst in their portfolio is students who do the worst in their portfolio and the best in invest right, they learn from their mistakes and they say, oh, if I was going to do it again, I shouldn't have, um, I shouldn't have invested this or I shouldn't have sold it at this time. And it, invest right allows them to reflect on the decisions that they've made in their stock market game portfolio. Um, so I encourage you to get involved in that. Um, historically, we've offered some amazing prizes for the national winners. We fly them to New York City. Their names are on the NASDAQ Jumbotron. They have the ability to ring the opening or closing NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange bell. Obviously, that's in a state of flux, so we've provided some cash awards for those. Um, but hopefully, we'll get to the point where we can resume our um, Wall Street experience prize. And then finally on Fridays, it's really exciting, is we partner with industry volunteers and you have the opportunity to join these calls. Students can join if they're, if you don't see them on Friday and maybe they're remote on Friday, they can join them without you. Um, they jump in, it's a discussion with a different firm and a different topic. So this week, obviously we were talking about um, quarterly earnings, and that's what the industry volunteers talk about, and stock research, okay? Even more offerings is we offer um, even more training for you as teachers. So we really delve into um, InvestRight, learn about InvestRight, learn about the prizes, focus on that, um, give you more information about that. We train you on the stock market game basics, okay? Um, and then we're also moving more into um, uh, themed webinars where obviously this one's basic company research. What we're gonna be moving towards in the spring semester is focused on specific subject matters. So if you're an economics teacher, um, we're gonna focus on what are the tools that you as an economics teacher need? How does that differ when we offer a session geared strictly towards elementary school teachers, middle school teachers? So um, all of these are located here. I'm also gonna pull up, um, here's all of the ones. So I do it week by week, but we offer them, you'll see through um, November 19th for the fall semester, and then we'll revamp for the spring semester starting in early January. So lots and lots of opportunities for you to get your questions answered um, by our staff. Okay. All right. All right. And then um, a couple of other things that I wanted to bring to your attention. And I think it is here. I wanted to talk and show you our stock market game teachers um, or uh, teacher specific stock market game Facebook page. So if you wanna get connected with other teachers 
and you want to kind of bounce ideas off each other. So if you're, again, a middle school math teacher and you want to talk and, and say, hey, how do you do this in your classroom? Can you give me some helpful hints? This is um, the perfect avenue, the perfect opportunity for you to connect with other Stock Market Game teachers. So that's brand new. Um, it also gives you the local happenings and the most updated happenings that are happening with the Stock Market Game. And then the very last thing that I wanted to bring to your attention oh, is our Stock Market Game Parent Guide. So again, if you want to engage your, your students' parents in supporting the stock market game, or if they've reached out to you and said, hey, I would love to participate with my child outside of school, they have the ability to do that. So you're meeting our team. If they want to register, help implement the program. All of that is available to them. Oh, and one thing that I didn't mention um, is we do have Google Classroom. So all of our curriculum materials um, are easily accessible, easily shareable with your students via Google Classroom. We also have a YouTube channel. Okay, and then the final thing, and I um, don't have a screenshot of it, I apologize, but it's our new smartphone app. So. It, we are bringing our smartphone into the 20th, 21st century. So um, our first go round of our app, kind of clunky. Um, teachers were giving us feedback, hey, it's not super intuitive for our students. Um, so we have completely revamped it, made it much, much more user friendly for the students. They can access those videos directly via the smartphone app, which is really, really cool. Because what we realized with COVID is they're utilizing their phones so much more. The ability for them to um, access their portfolio via a desktop just wasn't, wasn't realistic and wasn't happening. So it really led us to revamp um, and update our app. So we're really excited to announce that probably in the next week or two. Um, we'll be sending information out to um, Julie to share with you. It'll also debut in one of those stock market game week ahead messages. So what I want to do now is open it up for questions. Um, I, I do understand that it's Friday afternoon, so I'm sure if you guys get a couple of minutes back to your schedule, you won't be upset about that. Um, so I'll open it up to questions. Hello. Hi. Hello, my name is uh, Michelle, and I had a question um, regarding this program. First of all, it seems really good, so thank you for introducing us to this. Uh, I am not a traditional teacher, however. We work in uh, something like a community center. So are these resources available to, um, to me? Absolutely, and I'm glad you asked that question. So the stock market game is open to any and any and everyone interested in learning more about the stock market. So we have Girl Scout groups, we have church groups, we have Boy Scout groups. Um, I'm working with 100 black men. I'm working with um, a group, Black Achievers in Kentucky. Um, so absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? For some reason, I can't, I don't think there's any messages included in the chat. I can't see it for some reason. So Julie, if you're able to see anything that are included in the chat, um, let me know. Um, no, I don't see anything. Um, the only question that was in there was actually Michelle's and you answered that and then she did ask um, herself. Um, so you guys, you guys can still sign up for the fall session and the year-long session. 
Um, the fall session, we are actually gonna close the registration on October 30th. Um, so you do still have time to sign up. Um, the prizes have changed. If you guys been with us for a while, you guys know that our initial prize was actually a trip to New York and it was really fantastic. But unfortunately, the New York Stock Exchange, they kind of changed the rules on us as how old you can be in order to go. And it was 14 and up. And we were kind of like, oh, gosh, well, what happens if we have a bunch of elementary school kids that win, you know, which, by the way, did happen. And so we were kind of grandfathered in for that one trip. But um, so we decided to make it a cash prize. And it was kind of weird because the timing was perfect because... COVID happened and the trip would have been canceled. So it's actually $500 per student, max of $2,500. Um, it is legitimately a check that gets sent out to the students. They have to fill out a W-9 on our part and you get a check and the student hopefully will invest it, but uh, you know, or at least put it into a savings account or something like that. But it's their prize to do what they want with and how they feel they want to spend the money. So. Um, it's a pretty big prize. Um, I know that not a lot of council has a big prize like that, if I remember from my trips to New York and meeting with other councils that actually does the stock market game. So, you know, Wisconsin is a little bit more unique that we do actually offer a pretty decent um, Z grand prize. I don't know any other council, um, Julie, that offers that impressive prize. I offer t-shirts and medals and banners. Um, there was a question, how much is there or what's the fee to play? So there is a fee because our game is prized. Um, we do need to obviously, you know, be able to cover some of that grand prize and stuff. So it is actually $25 per team. So if you kind of think about it, the max students you can have on per team is five students. So it comes out to be $5 per student which isn't that much. Um, the year long game is $20. Um, there is not a cash prize or anything like that with the year long, but um, there is, I mean, that's just our fee to cover the fee that we have to pay SIFMA to be able to have the game. So, um, you know, it's not like we make a profit on that or anything like that, but so there is, um, uh, there is a fee and um, I do invoice you, you know, towards the end of, um, for the spring and the year long, I do it towards the end of spring. And for the fall here, you guys will be getting an invoice from me after the registration closes down. But, um, you know, it's kind of, I mean, you can have one team. I actually have a school that typically signs up anywhere from 80 to 100 teams a year. So, um, I mean, you know, a lot of times if you hit your local credit unions or banks in your area and ask if they'll sponsor your stock market game, a lot of banks will do that. I know there's quite a few credit unions that are more than happy to sponsor that, you know, just because it fits into their uh, mission of, you know, financial literacy education for their community. So that might be something that you guys want to check into. We do offer some scholarships. Um, you do have to be a school that offers, um, let's see, free lunches, you know, that falls into that Title I. And so you can apply for that. Um, so we, you know, will, depending on how many people apply and depending on how much we have for a scholarship, it will determine how many teams that we can cover for you. Anybody else have any questions or concerns or, um, you know, maybe you guys have a best practice that you guys want to share or something that has worked in the past. Um, we used to do, well, we haven't because of COVID, but our workshop, we used to hold two of them a year, one in the fall and one in the spring. And we had a fantastic educator named, um, let's see, Brent Mansky, who actually would conduct our um our workshop and it was fantastic because he literally would tell you how to use the stock market game the Jedi revolution game which is offered by the national council and the textbook which we actually offered at the workshop called earning learning and investing and he actually used all three of them together and created lessons um 
And he also gave you some, um, I'm gonna say game, other games that you can utilize with the stock market game. And so we're really hoping that we'll be able to bring that back. Obviously once, you know, the world kind of goes back to normal. And um, I know sometimes it's really hard to travel because we typically have those here in the Milwaukee area. And of course, you know, if you're like in La Crosse or something like that, that would be a really far drive. But we're hoping that um, as we kind of move forward, we're like realizing that, you know, virtual conferencing and meetings are probably going to become a little bit more of the norm. And so we're also hoping to do maybe, you know, what we call like after hours, which is you know, maybe hold like an hour session, you know, maybe once a week and once every other week just to be able to get together, you know, maybe bring some people in the industry to talk about, um, you know, careers or um, just about investing and then to be able to answer any questions that people may have, you know, that they ran into maybe, you know, that particular week, so. Well, if nobody else other has questions, we can close out and we'll let you guys go so you guys can start enjoying the nice weekend. I hear that if you're in Wisconsin, we're not supposed to get rain tomorrow. So, which is great because I have a birthday party to go to and I'm pretty sure they're gonna have it outside. So I'm prepared to dress really warm, but hopefully it won't rain. So we thank you very much. And Liz, I am so grateful for your help and your team all the time when the game starts. I know that sometimes that can kind of be a pain in the butt because I ask so many questions, but we really do appreciate you guys. And, you know, Economics Wisconsin loves this platform. We love being able to offer this program to everybody and, you know, stock market game. I love these direct delivery programs to our students. Um, something that uh, I always wonder is when we teach the educators or train the educators, you know, the whole business that it will trickle down to the students, but we wonder what is the percentage of that, that that actually happens. And so I love these direct programs directly to the students because I know it's actually going directly to who our core audience is and who we want to transform. So we really appreciate it. And I know that, you know, I know you're an hour ahead of us, so you're like at four o'clock right now. So if there's no more questions or anything like that, we'll close out the session and we'll see you guys next year. I'm sure I'll talk to some of you guys probably in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, everybody. Take care.